Right, well now to other things that go bump in the night, ghostly things. The port of Whitby seems to have a more than generous share of supernatural inhabitants. Most of them were flourishing long before Bram Stoker chose Whitby as the setting for part of his masterpiece, Dracula. One man who's made a study of local legends and superstitions is the assistant harbour master, Paul McDermott. In his spare time, he conducts guided tours of ghostly Whitby. Alan Powell has been to meet him. Right, we're here on the East Cliff, beside the Abbey, in St Mary's Church. Now, why have we started here, Paul? Well, as a rather strange custom to do with this very porch, it's mentioned in the Reverend George Young's history of the town of 1817, and this is what it was. On the night of the 24th of April, some of the more excitable members of the community used to come up to this very porch and stand here at midnight looking out. What they expected to see was a parade of phantoms slowly wafting by the porch as the clock struck midnight above them. And of course, the most terrible thing about this parade, bad enough as it was with these ghosts going forth, was that these ghosts weren't the ghosts of people already dead and buried in the churchyard in front of us, but said to be the ghostly apparitions of those about to die the coming year and be buried in the churchyard. So they'd be standing there going, Ooh, there's Uncle Fred. <laughs> oh, there's old Jack. <laughs> there's myself. <gasps> but there's even a more terrifying one. That's the Bargus coach. Yes, that's this macabre ghost coach, which appears the night after a scene of Whitby had died and been buried in the actual graveyard itself. And this terrible coach used to appear in Green Lane next to the Abbey itself and come crashing and rattling down the road there, heedless of anybody that's path, <laughs> into the graveyard and, whoa, stop by the departed seaman's grave. It would then pick up the soul of the, the uh, departed seaman, <laughs> rush out the graveyard, <laughs> run down the steps, <laughs> crashing and rattling as it went down all those steps and sharp right turn into Henrietta Street, tear along the street and <laughs> over the cliff, <laughs> into the sea below and disappear. And it was said to be this terrible ghost coach that was sent here by the sea to collect the souls of these departed seamen. And now you've brought us to the West Pier, to the lighthouse. Now, what is there here that should interest us? Well, there was a rather interesting sighting of a ghost in that lighthouse. What happened, 1957, a young girl was walking up the very tight, narrow staircase inside there. She got halfway up the steps when suddenly in front of her she saw the figure of a man. Stopped dead, waiting for her mother, who was just behind, to rush forward and help the man to his feet. But her mother keeps on saying, come on, love, what's the matter with you? Keep going. She turns around to her mother and says, but can't you see the man lying in the steps in front of me? Turns back, the figure had vanished completely into thin air. And I found out from one of the harbour masters that what possibly it was, was that in 1955, a man died in the lighthouse. He was a lightkeeper for the actual harbour. He'd been walking up the very tight, narrow staircase, had a heart attack halfway up, fell down and died. But the twist is that the previous harbour master to him was actually on the scene when this man died. And he believes that the man he was helping had actually been frightened by a ghost who was there in the first place. If the lighthouse has perhaps two ghosts, the Bagdale Hall Hotel, one of the oldest houses in Whitby, has several. What is now a comfortable bar used to be the kitchens, and it's where a poltergeist called Geoffrey is reputed to throw things around, presumably when he's been annoyed by the other ghosts, chief of whom is the splendidly named Captain Brown Bushel, Brown with an E, that is. Bushel, a swashbuckling adventurer, backed to the wrong side in the Civil War and ended up in the Tower of London, where Brown with an E became Brown without a head. And it is in that decapitated condition that Captain Bushel walks the staircase of his former home. Well, now we're on the stage of the Spa Theatre, on the set, in fact, of Toad of Toad Hall. Are you going to tell me there's a ghost here? Well, yes, there is, actually. Because what happened was, two years ago, I was actually on the stage here doing one of the pantomimes, I think it was Dick Whittington. Get myself changed back there in the changing rooms, and one of the girls who was helping with the props rushed up to me and said, I've just seen a ghost. And I said, well, quick, show me, because I was interested. Ran down here, ran over to the side there, and what she seen was, was this. She'd been sitting over there, stage left, 
looking at the production that was going on, and suddenly, just behind her, she noticed a woman in a white dress. And she thought, that's funny. That dress isn't in sort of par with the actual production here. And she, as she watched the figure, it slowly moved, had it back to her, slowly moved up the back of the stage and vanished into a wall at the back. And she was terrified by the time she got to me. It just literally ran up there. And because fortunately, when I got, by the time I got down here, it was gone. Well, you give me a very potted version of your guided tours around haunted Whitby. Have you yourself ever seen a ghost in these places? No, not me personally. I think it's one of those cases where I've always a bridesmaid, never the bride. I've myself, I've never seen anything. The people that come on my walks, of course, relate to me the stories they've experienced in Whitby and their own houses. And it's something that I think to do with the, the, the person themselves and the actual surroundings they're in, whether it's an old building or some old strange place where some terrible acts taking place. But me, no, I've never seen anything at all. You see right through that. I'm told that John Clapton goes bump of the night, but I have no personal evidence of that. <laughs>